Welcome to Spiritually Raw. We expose and explore controversial truths, myths, and theories surrounding the spirit world. Guests include investigators, debunkers, and skeptics of the supernatural, unexplained, and flat out unimaginable. Content discussed on this show is not necessarily the opinion of the cast of Spiritually Raw, and topics quite often are for mature audiences only. This show is not intended to replace any medical, financial, or legal advice, and is for entertainment purposes only. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. that instant gratification for your skin like if you're like hmm you're looking in the mirror and you're like geez i just wish i could just go a little bit tighter <laughs> a little lift every day this is what this is a little mat this is well, this is it you know i said the other day it's like every listen everybody loves to have a great hair day but how about having a great face day <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you? And welcome to Spiritually Raw. And as always, thank you very, very much for your energy exchange with us today. And we hope you woke to the most miracle morning and are also having the most fortunate day today. So check out this miracle. You're looking <laughs> at it. Venus twins, Georgie and Claire, we're about to meet them. We're going to find out their journey in their life and how it can help us in our journey in our life. So this is very, very cool. So just definitely want you're gonna definitely gonna want to hang on to this one. April will give you a description about uh Georgie and Claire in just a second, let you know who they are. Um, thanks everybody for hanging out with us as you always do and to stay connected with us. Our links will be in the description below. You know, you can download us here on the app and then watch us on Roku TV. And all of Georgie and Claire's links will be in the description below too. So you can get connected with them, find out about their works, their journey, and again, how it can benefit you in your life too. So this is pretty cool. I'm really excited about this show. What am I missing? Anything? Uh, yes. From wherever you're watching, please do take a quick second, hit the like bu button, the subscribe, and we surely all would greatly appreciate it if you would share the video. And if you haven't already, please do join us on Telegram. And everyone's links, all of our links are also in the show descriptions below. So make sure to check them out as well. All right. So we have the Venus twins. We are so excited. Uh, Georgia, you are a healer from Venus with ancient wisdom in your DNA. She has very special DNA with a crystalline energy that helps her connect to her spirit guides and her helpers. Georgie works with God to remove the and from people. And she works with her guides as well and spirit helpers, we're excited to hear what that means, um, to heal all other elements from people. Claire's been a healer her entire life, starting with caring for the elderly, elderly, and then moving into the professional nursing field. Claire is excited to be able to heal people with the quantum field of energy and assisting them in their ascension into the fifth dimension. All of their links, their link tree and their Patreon, which is brand new, so make sure to check that out. All of their links are in the show description below. Welcome to the show, ladies. It is so, from down under. Hey. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> Letting us know. It's actually um, winter, right? Winter in Australia now. It is yes, absolutely freezing down here. Uh, and it's early morning so, for us. Yeah, so, yeah, just check this out, everybody. So we are talking to Venus twins in winter while it's summer here where we're at. So this is going <laughs> to set the theme for the kind of show we're going to have. It's going to be very oh. cool. So uh, bless you both. And thank you very much for your service and coming on here today to share time with us. We we appreciate the opportunity to get to know with you. So if it's OK with you, can we dive right in and let's 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 yeah, get yeah. Thank you for so else. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. So. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, there's the dynamic of twins. OK, so there's that. There's that uniqueness there. Um, and then now you're you're Venus twins. And I and I don't want to assume anything here, but um, am I understanding it right that you both have connected the fact that you're from Venus? Correct. Yes. That, that is correct. Okay. And and how um how old were you both? Oh, well, number one, where have you always been this connected as twins together? I mean, has your bond always been like this, or did you no. we only met we only met 
No, we, we're identical twins on Venus, and we'll explain that a little bit more later. We're, we're certainly not identical twins or even related here mm. on Earth whatsoever. And we've only known each other for just uh, how many months now? A year and three months. Yeah. A year and three months. Oh, so wow. you're not sisters? No. no. Well, but they we are, are not on Venus. They're just right. at a different you, I mean, level. You, 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 look, look, uh, you look. You could pass for twins. <laughs> but you've never been told that before, have you? No, because no, we've only have known each other for such a short amount of time. Okay, and it's okay, that's cool. amazing. All right, so well, right. We've had yeah, a massive yeah. journey in a short amount of time and, boy, has a lot happened and we've learned so much and, and been so, through it together. So tell me, like, the dynamic of you meeting and uh, and then determining of that. So you've only known each other for a short time. You met, instant connection, obviously. Then you determine, okay, now you're Venus twins. What was that? Can you paint us the picture of that meeting oh. when you met, how you met? A few months ago and then how long after that did it was it determined that okay hey wait a minute we're from venus and we're twins <laughs> that play out exactly yeah well, do you want to go start Georgie? yeah well spirit our spirit guides really helped us to meet each other and we weren't aware of that at the time but what happened was we were in lockdowns in melbourne very heavy lockdowns we were doing a lot of our own deep diving and research into what was going on in the world. We'd both woken up at a very similar time yeah. in early 2020 when everything started to happen with all the lockdowns and stuff. Mm. And so I was reading Dolores Cannon books. Um, I was delving into all kinds of stuff. At that time, Claire had been doing the training for to be a QHHT practitioner through Dolores Cannon's work. And I decided I really wanted to do one of these QHHTs because I was really starting to get very curious about where am I from and a lot more about um, what's going on out there in our atmosphere and space. And I'd never been interested in that aspect of the spirituality before, but then I started to realise how linked it all was and I started to really dive into that side of things. And so I was looking for someone to have a session with and I was also a part of JCK's Facebook group. I don't know if you know of her. Oh, yeah, she's and been on the show. Mm -hmm. So was Claire. Oh, right. And yeah. so I um, I was just looking on it one morning and a comment popped up and it was Claire asking if anyone wanted to do a free QHHT session in the Melbourne area because she was doing it as part of her training, her second year training. I thought, wow, that just popped up right <laughs> in front of my face. Okay, fantastic. So I've sent her a message. Yeah, um, and, and she, we found out we live one street away from each other. Mm. Wow! Yeah. No oh, way! Um, wow! And, we, and we've mm. since found out that all of our crew and family up on the spaceship that we're going to talk about soon were all like having a party, celebrating this this meeting of the two of us reunion. final reunion <laughs> on the Earth plane. They're all like, "Yeah, it's happened!" And, and so I I met her, and I instantly felt that I knew her, and we just clicked, didn't we? Yeah. And then began, you know, the the fun with we started um, learning how to use uh, a pendulum just for a bit of fun, and we were both started a, um, a spiritual development course just locally together, um, and we then started comparing notes, so to speak, and we started coming together for walks during these lockdowns and saying. Did you get a message about a spaceship last night? I got a message that um, told me that I was being taken up onto a spaceship and being healed. And Georgie then mm. would confirm I got the same thing. So this is independently of sitting with each other. And th at this stage, using the pendulum was very slow and very tedious, really, yeah. just getting spelling the words out it took ages so we'd only get like a like a like a sentence perhaps yeah um and but it was just becoming more and more interesting and coincidental and, and coincidental and then, then we yeah. started to get together and do it too and when we were together we got the information about each other as well and our relationship with each other so then they started to tell us stuff like about who we you, actually were you, uh, yeah you have your healers from venus you have nine guides you are a part of that group of nine guides and they're called the nine mm -hmm. um and your identical twin sisters yes. from venus and, and that were a legacy of healers response who are responsible for the planet venus being known as the healing planet or the healer, the planet of love as it, you know, mm. but, um, and that we'd also trained and set up all of the healers on Venus 
So that is a plant that it's a planet of people in excellent health mm-hmm. who know how to heal themselves from like as soon as they're born, really. Yeah. And all, it all links to what's going on here on earth now for the great awakening, because there's yeah. a massive team, a, a huge amount of people from Venus who are here now. Mm-hmm. And so many of them have been involved in creating that beautiful healing planet of Venus and we're bringing it here to earth. And so, it was met, and it was very important that it was brought to Earth because Venus was going, we could have, was very much under threat of having what is going on on the planet now. So it's that's interesting, um, Jay and I. We've done like over two thousand interviews, but just wow. recently, within the past two or three months, all these years we've never really done anything on Venus, in particular. But just recently, it's like one after like, another. Oh, Venus, Venus, oh. Venus, Venus, Venus. Yeah. yeah which is, so this is really cool. But then not this <laughs> level of Venus. Right. No, this is entirely. Like, you you're got a another whole level of you Venus. got another. You got another <laughs> level of Venus, which I'm excited about. Okay, so this is cool, and I, <laughs> and, I, and, I and I and I love the I love uh, the and I want to uh, congratulate you both for just embracing the possibilities of what the spirit, what this world has has mm-hmm. for you here. Um, and what it's showing you and just being good with that because that just gives others the confidence to put themselves out there like this and, yeah. and do this. So, okay, so now oh, you're with yeah. Venus. You are uh, you are twin sisters here. Have you got any indication? Again, like you just said, twin sisters there. That's why I said it. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah not. Um, I said, did you did you get any indication oh, of, of what you're doing here? <laughs> what 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 brings you to Earth? And like you said, we're hearing more and more, which we never had before. What's yeah, it's what's like, it's going like on in Venus, out. and we why is it. Venus becoming on the forefront right now? during this specific time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question, good question. Uh, well, what what we know about that, and we don't profess to be experts on this, because as, as we just mentioned, we are only a year and three months into this, um, although we have done a lot of research and listening to, to people over the past two years. But what we do know is that um, our guides uh, started working with us together and they pushed us to create uh, a healing business where we, our missions, right, Georgie, yeah, mm-hmm. where our mission, main mission was to help, um, to be trained ourselves first and then now we're finding out that we're going to be able to train other people to remove the harmful stuff, harmful components of, the, mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the yes. injuries associated with that too and all other ailments mm. in in the body mm. so and then they guided us with the name of our business they even guided us with how to create the logo it was all channeled mm. so they wanted a crystal they wanted nine ravens which is also interesting do you want to tell them about the ravens yeah well the ravens are our protectors spirit birds that protect us we've yes. since found out we have them around our homes uh, yep. see them all the time so they're protecting and watching over us but also they represent our nine guides too and mm. sometimes when we're doing healings particularly on each other because we heal each other to keep ourselves you know really healthy and um, able to keep on doing the work we're doing yeah um, we get visions when we do healing as well beautiful visions that are given to us by god we yeah. think and often we get a vision of the ravens circling above us when we're doing a healing particularly on each other and just yesterday mm-hmm. I was actually doing a healing on someone and she was lying there and said to me, what do the crows mean? <laughs> and I said, so well, she was I saying- said, well, I call them ravens. And I said, they've <laughs> sort of got a bad rap here, you know, like they're sometimes seen to be evil, but they're actually beautiful protector mm. spirit animals. And, and I they said- love humans that we, well, I got mm. a channeling once that said they love humans so much. They're willing to die for us. Mm. Isn't mm. it beautiful? Wow. Yeah. They they definitely ra- uh, ravens or people refer to them as cr- they for sure get a bad rap. So that's <laughs> and, yeah, I know, <laughs> I, I know. So are you when you're channeling? Is, are you a conscious channel or you're unconscious channeling? And who conscious. Do, are you both channeling? Yes, we we work separately um, when we do the work, um, but often we can do it together. And we use and we now now the words are not are coming. It's telepathic, telepathic information. Mm-hmm. So, so when someone's with, when someone's with you, are they actually in a, in the presence of both of you, or is it kind of like you one of you and then the other one of you kind of comes in one at a time? Or well, how do you... 
Yes, we work independently with our clients. We're nearby yeah. to each other, um, but yeah. we have our own studios set up at home, mm -hmm. our own right. healing rooms, and so we work yeah. from there. And we do a lot of remote work too. So we do a lot of work over Zoom where we can do remote healings for people around the world, and we can yeah. also do readings remotely too on Zoom. So we've been doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, since we did an interview with Mark Atwood and it just uh, uh, it just went absolutely crazy and we've been working very, very hard, especially over the past um, five, good for you six both. Congratulations. Good for you both. That's, that's good. awesome. And that's, that's good how, energy. Georgie, how, how did you know that your DNA was crystalline energy? Uh, only because when I was channeling, my guides talked to me about it and told me about it. But also when we were channeling the information for our website with our mm -hmm. guides, they gave us that information. And at first we were both saying, do you really think we can put this on a website? People are going to read <laughs> this and be like, mm, so they think they're from Venus, do they? And, you know, we just were a bit sceptical and they were like, no, trust us. You know, mm -hmm. as time goes by, this is going to become quite normal information and it will resonate with people. Just trust us and put it on there so some of our family and friends think we've gone a little bit loopy don't they? <laughs> but we're, we're trusting the whole process we're just living in a state of flow and trusting everything following our guidance and so yeah. far it's been incredible hasn't it Claire yeah incredible journey. on a daily basis we get more stuff and the reward the personal reward for us of the transformation we see in people that we meet and the healings that we do is you know the proof for us yeah. that, that what we're doing really is what we've done every lifetime and what we're meant to be doing here mm -hmm. so venus beautiful. being a um when you hear about venus you know uh, uh men are from mars women are from venus you hear that cliche if you would is that is there any truth to that is is, is venus more of a feminine energy is there any masculinity yes. there at all or is it all feminine energy oh, there's definitely a, a balance of divine masculine and divine feminine it but it's it is very feminine, isn't it? Like what, what we're finding out and what we're connecting with, even on our spaceship, that there are a lot of females that have very important roles on our spaceship. Mm -hmm. And even the spaceship itself is a female sentient being. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's she's she, made of crystal. Yeah. Yeah. And let's backtrack on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you are summer. Uh, summer stuff. Your spaceship. Okay. So like, can you explain exactly how you came to understand that it's your spaceship and what does it look like? Have you actually been on it? Yes. Yeah. We, ha we, <laughs> well, we have um, went in our sleep on the uh -huh. uh, actual plane. So the information that we started to receive in the beginning was that we're uh, warriors, uh, a group of this group, a particular group of nine, and that we fight every night in the tunnels underground in on earth and on many other planets as well throughout the galaxy it's not every night yeah. we're on and off so we'll go in and fight for maybe two weeks and then we'll have two weeks where we're not fighting underground right. and, and we feel it here on the <laughs> earth plane we feel exhausted sometimes and we even have felt physically injured sometimes too even though we're not going in this body we mm. actually go into a warrior avatar to do this fighting in the dums in the tunnels mm. Um, and our souls are, uh, we were told, uh, and we believe this to be true, are that are kept, being kept uh, safe on the ship mm -hmm. uh, and they're under guard um, by the um, God's army, mm -hmm. uh, the warriors, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, yeah, God's army, and uh, they're being kept safe up there and as well as many other um, souls on that ship as well. They're in pods yeah. On the ship. Oh, yeah. Well, what do they what do they look like? What does the uh the the physical being of a of someone from Venus look like? Do they look like us? Same human yeah, character. We don't really know. We've been told that they're humanoid looking, they're taller than us, so over six foot, most of them. Um, but we don't really know yet. Do um, we? we haven't had that uh and we've also handshake and meet face to face no, yet. <laughs> we're not allowed to remember all of said, I got you. No, we know we travel every night. We know we do things. We remember little snippets sometimes, but we don't remember much about the ship. But we're taken there regularly for healing, taken up to the ship for healing. And we started to find that out, and that's when we knew that there was a ship. And then Claire was down at the beach. Um, down Torquay Way, which is in Victoria, Australia, lawn, down, down lawn the bottom of lawn. Yeah. And she took a photo just out <clears throat> to sea on a beautiful semi-cloudy day mm -hmm. and then realised after and was told after, oh, you just took a beautiful photo of the ship. 
<laughs> so we have that photo I'll have um, to find it. on our YouTube love channel. To see that. Yeah. On our YouTube channel and we've got it on our Instagram as well. But you can see the three thrusters beneath the ship, which is what holds it in position when it's stationary in its position in the atmosphere. And it's usually over Melbourne most of the time. And it's actually positioned between our houses. We can see it quite often in the sky and we sense it too. We actually yeah. feel and sense it when I'm it's around. Sure. Um, being got... so sensitive, how um, how yeah, is it yeah. for? Oh, so, that is so cool! That's incredible! Wow, that I didn't know. I didn't, I did that. That. Yeah, That's I didn't know it was picture. actually. I didn't know it was there. I was just taking a photo of the lack of waves, thinking, "Oh, I won't be going surfing today." <laughs> <laughs> and um, I then I went back and looked at it, and and that's what I saw. So that's incredible. amazing. That is very very cool. Um, as being so sensitive to energies, how are you navigating through Australia with these strict, crazy regulations? Mm, good, well, good question. they've eased up a lot, thank goodness. Yeah. That's yeah. great news. I feel like I've become a bit oblivious to it all too because I really mm. just don't let it bother me. We, we don't consent to any of it. No, we're just both really. so incredibly positive all the time, rising above it and choosing not to partake in it in any way. So we don't watch the news. We don't look at the papers. We don't no. do any of that stuff. We're we're living, you know, on a higher timeline. We really, I was in, I was involved in a lot of the, or not involved, but I was participating in a lot of the protests. And at, around this time last year, mm. they were going really, really full on um, every, nearly every weekend. These massive protests, which were not being um, reported um, by the M mainstream media, of course. Mm. Uh, you know, we had nearly. Um, at one point, 100,000 people in the city. Then it was 200,000 the following week. And then the, the weekend after that, we had nearly, they reckon, nearly 800 to a million people. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah, we definitely don't hear about yeah, that. Don't hear that. Do you have a mm -hmm. sense of um, what brings you here from Venus, why you're particularly here? And yes. what what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do with this planet? Or what are you supposed to help guide through? Well, we are healers. We've yep. done that in every single lifetime we've had. We can tell you a bit about where we come from because we're not actually from Venus. Venus is the, the planet we've chosen to live on. Mm -hmm. um, we are ancient beings. We go back eons um, to nearly the beginning of time. And we come from a small planet called Zene, spelled Z-E-N-A-E. At first, we weren't allowed to speak about this publicly, so we didn't tell Mark Atwood this information. We got um, the go-ahead. But we're allowed to <laughs> now because it's a bit safer for us to do that now. But we're very heavily targeted by the evil that are taking over this planet and try to take over other planets too. And the reason for that is we come from this planet, Zene, that was destroyed by the Draco eons ago. It was a small planet. You wouldn't be able to look it up. It's just not known of in our history mm -hmm. at all. But um, we were away on a mission in our ship at that time. And there were about a thousand of us on the ship. Just 1,000, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we were sent on this mission by God to save us because we're meant to be extinct right now. Mm -hmm. um, so our race was completely wiped out and our planet. Um, and then we actually lived on Lyra mm -hmm. and we were Lyrans for a while. And that planet was also destroyed by evil because we are very much targeted by evil because we are a race of very benevolent, ancient, wise beings who have always worshipped the one true living God. And all creation, love, light and compassion. And yes. Jesus Christ more, you know, in the, the later times. But yes. um, for that reason, we're always targeted by evil. And because we lost our planets the way we did, we became very humanitarian souls who worked with God from that point on after we lost our planet to evil our main mission yeah. in every lifetime has been to help save other planets from the same fate yeah so that's what we do we go around in our ship with with others as well a big team of us and most of the crew on the ship are warriors most of us yeah. do fight in the tunnels and only that leads us to, to into the andromedan council of nine mm -hmm. which we which we um thought we'd talk to you about today as well yes yeah, so yeah, after our here. after zene was destroyed god created the council of zene 
which is also known as the Andromedan Council of Nine. Yes. And the original nine members of that council were the nine, our guides, which we are a part of. So we were the original members of this council set up by God to protect other planets from the same fate, evil taking over and destroying these planets. He gave the Zen A beings special powers to be able to time travel mm -hmm. so we can travel ahead in time and see what's going to happen to these planets in the future. And then we come back and talk to the Federation of Worlds and light beings and let them know what's going on, uh, which is what has happened with Earth. The Zen A beings are responsible for this whole great awakening and what is happening on planet Earth now for helping um, the planet because we went forward in time. We saw, this is the, the, the council, we saw the trajectory of Earth and that it was going to be destroyed. We went to the Federation of Worlds and Light Beings, which is the alliance that we were, um, they're the military faction that work with the Earth Alliance in this whole Great Awakening. Mm -hmm. And we said to them, this is what's going to happen to Earth. We need to intervene. It needs to be sorted out. So then we go back in time and we kind of rewrite history because our history is all over the place. <laughs> yes. You know, sure. if you really think about it, it's not really And it, there was another special correct. point too about the um, the fact that the the, uh, the council witnessed that um, Earth was able to use uh, space technology, which therefore increased the uh, risk of in, invasion. So mm -hmm. they were, um, that meant that uh, they had the go ahead to intervene. To intervene. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because normally yeah. you don't interfere yeah. with a race of people on yeah. a planet. That's the not law, allowed. The law of the universe. Mm -hmm. Have you two always been uh, twins throughout all the generations that you've reincarnated, whether it was here, other planets, so forth mm -hmm. and so on? Have you always we, been we, connected? Oh, we would probably guess it, yes, but we haven't asked that question before. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's another one we might have to ask our guides about. Oh, so, yeah. I would guess yes, because we were both we both originate from the very same beginning. Mm -hmm. um, we were created yeah. together, so I think so. <clears throat> yeah. Very cool. Can you can you um, shed some light on the messaging that we hear now on Earth, if you would, um, in it that we hear a lot of different people given their what they call their version of the truth about what is happening, what's to come. What are we missing here? What do you think? What do you think that we? Where do you think the sleight of hand is, if you would here? What what what's getting us off of our game? What's getting us not to connect the dots here as yeah. planet Earth? You know, fear. It's fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's simple, and that's basically what we've been told over and over and over, and um, and that uh, people are stepping in and out. Of fear they may be you know doing very well on their spiritual ascension so to speak um, but some of them are missing the point where they're um, not it's coming into their bodies enough not becoming uh, grounded and there's some other information we can give you about what the actual quantum body actually is to become mm -hmm. your quantum body and how yes. important that is to your ascension mm -hmm. yeah May I read a little bit about I love that? Yeah, sure, yeah, that'd be great. Um, so the quantum body, and this is from a course that we've done with the um, two wonderful people, Julia Stiles and Tanya DeHaan. So this is their work. They're in Australia. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the quantum body is pure light minus the shadows of the illusionary mind that created and operate a uh, dense holographic human form. It is divinely intelligent, all-knowing, benevolent and free. There is nowhere that it is not. It is part of creation itself, undivided and interconnected with everything. It is all-knowing, creative, clear, expansive, beautiful and multi-aspected. It is unconditional love. So uh, when we become our quantum selves, and there's a really, really easy way to do that, um, that many people do naturally, and other people may not be aware of, and that is with a particular breath technique. It's um, very simple where you bring your awareness from up here in your around the head where all the incoming programs, all the unhealed emotions and baggage, you know, that's coming in. Where the ego is. Yeah, where the ego is. And we bring our attention down with a breath and we bring our attention down, down to the base of our spine, actually, or anywhere underneath that that you might choose, even under your feet. 
-hmm. and it's a very peaceful place to reside. It it's is where very creation itself is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you very nice. when you hear about things here on Earth like this is going to get this is about to get shut down. Be prepared. Uh, stock up on this because this is this is going to happen here, and a lot of that's being sold to us. Mm. The, the the people that are disseminating that information are that would you consider them maybe false light workers of sorts that that are I, doing that that are saying you know here you know we're going to be on lockdown maybe the internet's going to be shut down for a month or a week or whatever and you know next yeah. thing you know people do nothing how would you define those people are they I think I think there's um, there's a lot of misinformation out there yeah. um, and we were recently told by our by the council that. Uh, there's a growing number of people that are spreading untruths now mm -hmm. um, from from the dark side, I guess you could say. Um, and it's all about just trying to put people back into fear because yeah. they need their food. They need their food. They're getting desperate. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being prepared a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, having yeah, your computers backed up. And we've had mm -hmm. uh, channeling to, you know, really uh, reiterate that for people, but, you know. Being you in think, fear and having your bags packed ready to go in case, you know, the boogeyman comes to the front right, door. Right, right. I got you. I got you. I think that I think it, that what you said is the most simplistic answer and it's the absolute 100% truth. It is the fear uh, that people are just constantly feeding into or being, you know, indulging in whether they sometimes think they might not be but then the conversation can easily you know there's a lot of people on even youtubers that you know will say one thing and the next thing you know they will put the fear into it and then you have a, a large amount of people watching and listening and next thing you know there goes the whole fear level again. do you think they're doing that knowingly or do you think at some point in time they actually have ta started talking about it with good intent and then just they kind of got absorbed. It. They it's got like absorbed, or, or, or like a literally, or like an energy like, like, manifest the energy. You know, true. It's you know, and we've heard this, you know, from many, many people over the years, and books written about it. You know, what you think you create, what you think becomes your reality. What do you think is the timeline you choose to jump on? And there's so many you can choose to jump on. Mm -hmm. So in the more you talk about fear, the more you're going to get because that's what you've asked for. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we're also learning that going with your inner feeling, your gut feeling is so incredibly important, tuning into your intuition. So how do things make you feel when you listen to them? You know, yeah. if they don't make you feel good, turn them off, turn away, change it to a positive. Sing a it's, song. It's really, Go for a run, yeah, whatever. <laughs> get get <laughs> in touch with exactly. nature. Meditate. Do things that uplift you and make you feel good. And then you're creating what you want in the world. And it's up to all of us to create together the positive outcome that we want because we're massive creators. We're so powerful. We have no idea, a lot of us. And we're creating very quickly just very through our... Yeah, and that's our, so true. Manifested, and this is where everybody needs to... I mean, everybody has to be uber careful because uh, manifestations now are coming literally at God, goddess speed. So, and, and that can work both ways, whether, you know, you could be moving forward and you can ex I, I similarly be moving backwards at just the same amount of speed so it is so important right yeah. now to watch what we say think and uh, make sure our discernment meter is yeah you got it I put, yep. yeah, exactly. um, right so there's this big sale right now in it that hey everybody we're on a 3d and don't you worry a flash will come and then we will be on 5d and and wealth and abundance and 20 year old good lookings for all my friends is going to happen. <laughs> so, there's that big sale. So, uh, and then, I'll buy that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. and, uh, well, apparently, a lot of people have. So, what do you say to your soul sisters and brothers out here right now that are doing that? Because we're, and I'm sure you probably hear on your end, I know we do on our end, we hear on our end, they're like, well, we are okay with the fact of not doing anything here where we're at, like in this 3D world, which I, believe we can all agree we can touch ourselves and i feel it i feel i'm here um oh. they don't want to do anything because they feel like it's some moment we're gonna it's get an gonna escape so like poof that's right should we, should well, we there's an attachment of, there to something yeah. isn't what what, what are they got to ask themselves you know why why are they so attached to 
escaping and leaving why not live in the now because that's all there is um and that's I mean, what is it, is it, is it really that is. is it really that yeah. bad here i mean i you know i think that's all perception right i mean so there's this there's this feeling of a great escape but i mean should we be looking to try to escape are we are we in that kind of planet or should we be looking no, for no. like hey this is incredible you know what i mean we yeah. can live heaven on earth here and can we do that from what you understand i Absolutely. feel and i'm learning the more that i go through this journey that this is a very gradual process. I really don't feel there's going to be some big solar flash or any very dramatic event that's going to shock or scare people because it would have happened by now. Anyway, and what would they learn? What would happen. they learn if that if it all yeah. just happened was given to them on a plate? Mm -hmm. And I feel it's more about <clears throat> it's more about getting up every day and being grateful that God gave us the opportunity to be here on this planet now for the greatest show, not just on Earth but in the multiverse. multiverse. I mean, every planet. <laughs> Every solar system, every galaxy is involved in this great awakening. It is mm. living gratitude. Have grateful for the yeah. breath in your lungs, in your body, and the blood in your veins. Mm. Just be grateful. And the energies that are coming in mm. that are blasting us and helping us to rise up and, and ascend bit by bit. And we're getting those physical symptoms of that where we feel tired or we have different things going on because of these energies that they're saying are coming into yeah. the planet. Electromagnetic their forces they yes. were telling us um, yeah. they said they're sort of beyond our comprehension to try to explain in detail where they're all coming from and what it is but it's all helping us to go through this process very gradually in divine timing gently the plan is all going beautifully yeah god has won this war it's all very positive and we have a message it's, from, yeah, from the council if you'd like us to read it it's but coming it's from the multiverse because everyone is involved and everyone is cheering us on. And we are so privileged to be here going through this. I mean, we didn't read the fine print, but hey, it's <laughs> fun. You know, it's not all bad. Uh, it's no, how I think, you choose. I think this is the greatest time to be alive. This is so oh. exciting. I mean, we're mm -hmm. literally uh, living through the greatest show of all time. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I, do, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah I love that message. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. So this is a message to humanity from the Andromedan Council of Nine. Wonderful. And we have read this out on um another platform, just one. Um, but we'll we'll read it out to every all of you there in the States. Thank mm. you. Uh tell humanity that we are winning this war against evil on planet Earth, and we are up, uh, excuse me, and we are expanding our efforts to help humanity in other ways now, as we have added two new representatives to our group from two other benevolent races that have been chosen by God to help in ways that they are strong and capable of, and you are the leaders of the council. <clears throat> so you determine what roles other beings take on in the council, and you have appointed them to make sure the atmosphere of earth is balanced and cleaned up soon. They are doing an amazing job of clearing the Earth's atmosphere of poisons and other harmful things that are keeping the humans asleep. So they are helping to wake humans up and also helping to clean the planet's atmosphere and also helping to lift the vibration of the atmosphere of planet Earth. And this helps the humans to lift their, their vibration and be happier and more positive and more in tune with their natural abilities and psychic abilities too. So all the people like us that are here to help can switch on faster and do their job. This okay. is sort of referring to the council that we talked about, and we haven't really explained it that well to you, but there are there were nine original members which we were a part of. After a while, it was a massive job to save all these planets with just the nine of us and the skills that we have, mainly as healers and warriors. So God then appointed eight other races of benevolent ancient beings from different solar systems and galaxies mm. to join the council. So then the nine that were the original part, eight of them stepped away but are still part of it because we all do the work and just the leader of those nine stayed on the council and the leaders of these other eight races became the members of the council too. Jean, so, Jean Decode um, 
uh, did some fabulous work and we've been following Gene actually since the very beginning and we know you guys love him too. Yeah. Uh, but he um, mentioned um, and did a, um, a show on Blessed to Teach um, about all the different races on the council, yeah. um, which is very interesting. Um, Gene also, um, I got onto Gene's show, a show on a do, doing a QA and a um, when we were <clears throat> finding out about ourselves on the ship and I asked him, I said, oh, Gene, I'm being told I'm being taken up onto a ship. Uh, do you, can you give me any information? He said, yes, that's correct. <laughs> you know the way he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that. I went, oh, I wanted to know more. <laughs> that was he's a such ago. a lovely, lovely man. You might tell us more now. Yeah, yeah, you never know. <laughs> could you, could you, you know, it's interesting. We, we, we're hearing about the council and, and I'm thinking, could you or would you or are you even thinking about even creating that form of a council here like that? You know, like so there's that council. Oh. But could you be saying, OK, well, look, there's a two of us. We are here and then start to create a quote unquote council, council that just resides nine. on Earth. Yeah. The council of nine that resides on Earth. Is that is that, wow, is that practical to have that. Great idea. happen? You know what yeah, I mean? That practical, that, that, it, mm -hmm. You know, and 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 start that process yeah well, jay, possible <laughs> jay that kind of leads into what's been happening since we did our first interview with mark atwood that made us public um we've then been bombarded with people who wanted to meet us and all these people have said the same thing they've all said we had goosebumps we we just we resonated so much with what you said and we just had this urge to connect with you mm. and then they've either connected with Claire roads. or with me for whatever reason it's been divinely guided to us and we have been working flat out ever since haven't we all day yeah. every day seeing people healing people doing readings for people but mainly the readings have been so interesting because they're all <laughs> so over amazing. the world and we're meeting incredible people and they're all playing important parts they're all connected to us all connected to the, the, the ship. ship. Many of them are Zene, original beings that are ancient, and they're all here on a mission like we are to help this in this great awakening. But they're not Earth. quite sure of what that is, a lot of them, most of them. So they're actually coming to us for their instructions. And that's what will happen in the middle of the reading or shorts. No, not even the middle, quite, um, you know, a few minutes in, their guides will say, here are your, we, we would like to give you your instructions. Someone like that. Or they'll say, it's so lovely to see you sitting together again, again. in this yeah. lifetime. The two of <laughs> you are like, oh. So you and have become, you, know each other. That's you, nice. you, you have sweet. become both of you the beacon of light for those people that are on the search and have been confused about where do I go and now you've shown up and then now they know, okay, these are the people that can take us home or, 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 or at least give us a yeah. sense of where we belong. Or just That's help to step onto that mission that purpose and it's Every, always searching yeah. for their purpose they're all very spiritually connected mm. um and they've all been on that journey all their lives like claire and i have too but they just haven't quite figured out why they're here what they're meant to be doing they've always felt they didn't quite fit in uh things weren't quite right here they've all yeah. got very similar stories they're at, at this point where they say i'm at a crossroads yeah. in my life i'm kind of feeling stuck what's next yeah, and then the information that, that comes through is usually in, um, about uh, maybe perhaps a business venture that they need to create or um, recreate within what they already are doing, but it's all about bringing community together. Yeah. It's all about joining hands. It's all about... It's bringing the tribe together. It's bringing the tribe back together. It's bringing communities and then, you know, it goes out and ripple effect. Mm. Yeah, it's just absolutely that, gorgeous. That. Yeah. And they're doing incredible yeah. things. Some of them are already underway with their missions and they're just getting that confirmation. Mm -hmm. Like some are already involved with the setup of med beds mm -hmm. um, throughout the world. Um, we're learning that there are going to be these incredible healing centres throughout the mm -hmm. world that will replace hospitals. Um, there'll be beautiful modern buildings with gardens around the outside where they grow herbs and spices and natural um, tonic plants for remedies and, and everything will be natural healing and you can get anything any remedy any modality when you go into these healing centers whether it's yoga and meditation or whether it's um, Chinese herbal medicine whether it's healers like Claire and I mm. whether it's going into a med bed rather than surgery um, there'll be these that. centers throughout the world and we're meeting a lot of people that are going to be running them training people in and they them, and they have like working in them the, what they do um, on earth 
is very um, complementary to the information that they're being given. So, and it's actually, we find out that a lot of them are on the ship as well. And mm -hmm. what they do on the ship as their job up there is, is often very, very similar in energy to mm -hmm. what they do on earth now, mm -hmm. even before sense. they've been. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. for, for people to experience uh, the the med beds, the, you know, this, this paradise, as you described it there, what do they got to do now to just pivot their, their shift to be able to, to have the opportunity to do that? Because if they don't, then they're not going to experience that. I would imagine, will they stay in a different dimensional timeline, timeline if you would? They have mm -hmm. to shift yes, somehow, yeah. I would imagine, right? We have established that, that some people have chosen to stay in 3D and to experience that timeline and yep. where it goes. And that's okay. That's their choice. They feel Everybody quite has safe there and they're quite happy with being a slave. And that the higher, <laughs> yeah, a higher, di yeah. the mm -hmm. higher dimensions here on Gaia, like fourth dimension, fifth dimension here on Gaia, Earth, will be where these healing centres are. Uh, Nasara Jasara and all the beautiful things that are being talked about in the truth of community, they are coming. They are already starting to yeah. happen here. And we're manifesting, creating that more and more by meeting all these people and helping them to step onto that path and, and really live out their mission here and their purpose here. And then eventually the ones who have been in service throughout all their lifetimes to others are the ones who go to Aurora. Not just this lifetime, all of the lifetimes that's, they've ever lived. That's what I was just going to ask you. What What is the new earth aurora? Isn't that a beautiful name? Mm. Yes. <laughs> she's, um, this she's, is what we channeled. Yes, this is, okay. So the planet of aurora is being seen much more frequently now in the skies of earth. And we do actually have a picture of her. We've both like seen to her. See, see it. I'd, I'd love, love to see, see aurora. <laughs> it's yeah. like the sun, but you can look at it not as bright as the sun where is it where are you darling where are you oh there she yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> all right so this was taken in the skies of melbourne during the daytime at around 2 p.m so that's not the sun and that's not the moon that's really? aurora wow mm. here's another one of her very beautiful and it's an unusual looking um gorgeous that it's not really emanating so like the sun does and the moon and that was in the afternoon mm. what's the atmosphere like there you have a sense of that as far as is it is it designed to be livable for people or yeah. it's oh, more definitely. Yeah. beautiful Heaven. in every way, Heaven every on every Earth. way. apparently it's there. a perfect combination of atlantis and lemuria the mm. divine masculine and divine feminine perfectly balanced yeah and she's sister to gaia a loving sister born recently however her consciousness is eons old mm. so she is new in a human sense mm -hmm. and she incarnated starting around 2017 this is all channeled sorry and it was glorious it was a sight to behold it was an explosion of a trillion stars that created aurora the angels sang in harmony again and when they do this the birthing pains are lessened and the experience of being born is an angelic delivery. The gift of Aurora is to the universe and the multiverse, and it is so extraordinary. It's difficult to even explain in words because to actually understand the beauty of her, you have to hear the vibration she emits and feel that within your cells. Then, only then, can you incarnate there. This is the ascension in a nutshell. Mm. So to hear Aurora, listen to your own heartbeat, and then breathe down to the base of your spine and you will get an idea of her vibration. Aurora is a planet of love and blessed harmony. Everyone who incarnates there is of a high frequency, but the time you spend on Aurora is much longer than the time you spend on Earth. A lifetime on Aurora will be around 800 to 1,000 years. Where we go one, we go all. The people who are happy with their programs lives will stay in the timeline of the NWO. They chose this so it's their incarnation and experience as we were just talking about. The people who are half asleep will be taken to fourth density. It's not as challenging as 3D negative. It's a lot more positive, but it's nothing like living on Aurora. <clears throat> There's no wrong or right choice. 
either about that, mm. what you choose to experience is no, just what no you chose problem. before you came. Mm -hmm. Can we create that? What about the, do they say about creating the Aurora here on our earth plane? Well, that's that's what all yes. these Venusians are here to do, I feel, mm -hmm. that we're bringing yeah. what we set up on Venus to mm -hmm. Gaia yeah, in that. the higher dimensions. It'll be a beautiful planet of healing and perfect health like Venus. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, love it. beautiful. Wow. Um, I want to yeah. talk to um, your business you call Wisdom Woven in Time Healing. When Your, your website's beautiful, by the way. It's uh, very you. easy to navigate. It's clean. You guys did a beautiful job. It looks beautiful. Um, what would you like people to experience when they visit your beautiful website? Oh, thank you. Well, it was all channeled um, on most of it. Even they helped edit it us mm. <laughs> with us, our guides, which was really fun. So a lot of the information about our services was all channeled. So it's it's really beautifully given from God. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, take a look at where we're from and who we are. There's a nice description there of Georgie and myself. And then we have the services section and a word from our guides as well, don't we, Georgie? Mm, yep. Yeah. 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 Just talking about us. And then um, the, the services, there's not many services. It's <laughs> just three services that we offer at the moment. We've also got, uh, and and two of those, two out of the three can be accessed worldwide because they're they can be done remotely on Zoom. So the only one that is has to be in person is the removal of this harmful stuff, um, which and is... we're the only ones who, uh, at this point, we've been told by God because we do have a, a direct connection with with the with the Creator, uh, which just blows our mind. <laughs> um, and He's told us that we're the only ones at this stage who can do that. Uh, we don't know. Uh, there may be some other people around the world, but I think he told us there's maybe 10 yeah. or so people in the world who can do this. But then we've been told recently that we're going to be able to teach everyone how to do it. Wonderful. So, that'll, that'll be through our Patreon, which we've only, we've only just launched, but we'll be um, putting together a training course so that this can be spread throughout the world. Yeah, and, and only, the only prerequisite healed. is um, Reiki 1 and 2. Yes. So you've got to, yeah. you've got to study Reiki first. Um, that's yeah, part you, of it. That's how you roll. Fantastic. Wow, wow. And, well, you also, and you have to also believe in a power greater than yourself. Course, as yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. For that sure. always helps. I'm sure that helps. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good help there. Um, well, welcome to planet Earth, both of you. And, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I hope you I hope you enjoy your stay and uh, hope oh, to see you. uh thank you very much for your service your dedication we do appreciate that and I do encourage everybody to check out their patreon if you're resonating with their message do support them that's how they continue to keep their subscribe mission and their, their dream YouTube alive channel. and um you know subscribe to their YouTube channel get the word out about them um there is a lot that's interesting you said that about a lot more mm -hmm. coming about that so I think there's a reason for that so mm -hmm. thank you both of thank you for you hanging so out with much. us today we appreciate that and, uh, it's been an absolute joy yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it really is it's, it's an honor on this side thanks everybody for hanging out with us we'll see you next time too and together with the Venus twins we are turning the universal key to global harmony and creating a unified world thank you so much for tuning in and remember tune in often tell all your friends and most importantly May all your beautiful dreams come true. Many blessings. We'd like to share a story. While it may sound fictional, it's very real and happening right now in front of our very eyes. It's called The Great Awakening. Our sisters and brothers that come on Spiritually Raw are doing everything to help expand global consciousness. And in many cases, putting everything on the line to share their messages about what's happening around the world for the greater good of humanity. We are living in the most unbelievable times. Some may even say biblical, scary for many and yet exhilarating for others. Together we are taking part in getting everyone acclimated to the great awakening process and the exciting new discoveries that lie ahead. The sad part is many of our amazing guests are being heavily censored, socially shamed and outright banned on many platforms for exposing the truth and piercing the veil. By becoming a viewer, you bring your powerful energy towards this global movement of other truth seekers. If you're resonating with our show, please let us know by hitting the like button, sharing, subscribing, turn on the notification, and leave some comments.
Together, we will turn the universal key to global harmony and create a unified world. And remember, tune in often, tell all your friends, and most importantly, may all your dreams come true. Thanks and God bless Patriots worldwide.